قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We begin by praising Allah, Almighty God, and asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad, to his family, and to his companions. A questioner asks, I want to accept Islam, but when I look at the actions and what's going on with the Muslims in the world today, I feel like it might not be such a good idea. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that whenever we want to judge any religion, any sect or group or any belief or system of beliefs, we judge it by its texts. We don't judge it by the actions of some people who claim to be from it. For example, if I were to judge Christianity by what a particular Christian I know today does, would that be a fair judgment of what Jesus, peace be upon him, preached? If I were to judge atheism by the actions of Joseph Stalin, for example, would that be a fair judge of what atheists are like in the world today or what atheism calls to? If I were to judge, for example, Christianity by the actions of Hitler, would that be fair to Christianity? And we can go on like this with many, many examples. In all honesty, it's only fair to judge Islam by the texts of Islam and by the actions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and those who followed and implemented Islam truly and properly, his companions. That is what it's fair to look at Islam in the light of. As for the actions of Muhammad and Ahmed and Fatima and Maryam today, those actions don't represent Islam, not even my actions. I'm, I'm here teaching you, trying to answer your question and share it with you. And, and my actions don't represent Islam. I don't have the right to say, I represent Islam. I am Islam for you. It's not like that. Rather, I do good things and sometimes I do bad things. And when I do something good, I try to do more of it. And when I do something bad, I ask Allah to forgive me. I ask God to forgive me and to guide me to better so that I don't fall into it again. But it's the Prophet, peace be upon him. It's Allah's Quran, the, the, the book of the, of the Muslims, the book of Revelation. It's the guidance of the Prophet, what he said, what he did, what he approved of. And the actions of his companions, that's, that's what Islam is all about. And that's what we should judge Islam by. If we look at what the Prophet said, he told us that Muslims will go through very difficult times. And there will be times when Muslims behave very badly. Uh, there are so many narrations I could choose to narrate to you, but I'll just pick a couple of them. In one, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, Badiru bil a'mali fitna. He said, race to do good deeds before trials come. And they're going to be like pieces of the dark night. A person might wake up in the morning as a Muslim and go to sleep as a disbeliever or go to sleep as a Muslim and wake up as a disbeliever. People will go through such trials and tribulations and calamities that people's Islam, will they will stop practicing it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he told us that there will be people from my nation who will go back to worshipping idols. And those people will be called Muhammad and Ahmed and Fatima and Maryam and all the Muslim names. There will be people from this ummah, the Prophet told us, who will declare things like alcohol and music to be permissible, things that they know were forbidden in Islam, they will declare them to be permissible. There are so many things that will happen as time goes on, and so many things the Prophet told us about as time goes on, it's clear that those people don't represent Islam. Now, I'm not saying that all of them left Islam. Of course, if they made a partner with Allah, with God, if they committed an act of disbelief, that's a different matter. But some of them just are sinful. You have a guy called Ahmed who drinks alcohol and a girl called Maryam who's in an illegal, illicit relationship. And you have a guy called Muhammad who cheats people. And you have a girl called Fatima who doesn't cover her, herself with the proper hijab. Those people are not out of Islam. They're just people who have fallen into sins. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Kullu bani 
وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ All of the children of Adam, all of Adam's children, all of human beings, every human being makes mistakes. Frequently makes mistakes. And the best of those who frequently make mistakes are those who frequently repent. So to a certain extent, we look at those people with a feeling of you know, wanting them to come back to practice Islam properly, calling them to come back to practice Islam properly. And those people might even be people who were involved in calling others to Islam. They had some good deeds and others bad. And there are some people who attribute themselves to Islam when they have no part of it, part of deviant sects and groups, or part of those who claim Islam or have Muslim names, but have done things that constitute disbelief in Islam. Ultimately, we can't judge Islam by this. We judge Islam by the Quran. We judge Islam by the Sunnah, what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said and did and approved of. We judge it by the way that the early Muslims practiced it and implemented it. We don't judge Islam by the people today. As for what Muslims are going through today, this is prophesized. Muslims will go through great trials and tribulations that in one narration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the enemies of Islam will gather around you like uh, you would call people to a banquet, you know, like you would call, come, come, eat with me, eat with me, come, come, eat with me. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when they heard about this, they said, O Messenger of Allah, will we be few in number? They thought maybe that it was like when they were just a tiny number of people and everyone was attacking them. He said, no, rather you will be large in number, many in number, but your deeds will be like the form of the sea. And you have nothing in terms of your actions. You've gone away from the religion of Islam. In reality, what's going to fix that? Bringing people into Islam who are going to practice it properly. That's one of the things that's going to fix it. Like Allah said, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبَدِ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ If we, if you people turn away, we will replace them with others those people will practice Islam properly and they will not be like you. And so this idea that people come into Islam, start practicing, we call Muslims who've gone far from the path back to practicing Islam. And through that, Islam comes back to how it was before. There was a great scholar of Islam, Imam Malik, rahimahullah. He said that the later part or the latter part of this nation will not be corrected except with what corrected the earlier part. That means that how the Prophet, peace be upon him, came to a group of people who had all of these sins and all of these social ills and all of these huge mistakes and all of this corruption in the society, what he came with to reform the people around him is the same thing that will reform Muslims today and correct Muslims today. Going back to the Quran, back to what the Prophet did, and said and approved of, peace be upon him, back to the way that his companions practiced the religion, back to really living Islam. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kaffa. O you who believe, enter into Islam completely, calling people back, calling people to turn back to Allah, to repent, to seek his forgiveness, to practice Islam properly. That's what's going to bring about a correction among Muslims. As for the trials and tribulations that Muslims are facing, then really all people upon truth face trials and tribulations. That's not to justify the bad behavior of many Muslims, because we know that Allah said, Corruption has appeared on land and at sea because of what the hands of people have earned, so that they may taste some of their evil deeds and so they may come back to God in repentance. Not to justify the bad behavior of some Muslims, but if you look at prophets through history, if you look at righteous people through history, they went through hardships, they went through trials. This life is meant to be a place of tests. The one who created death and life to test which of you are best in deeds. So if you see people going through difficulty and say, I don't want to be one of them, know that paradise comes after some difficulty. 
there is a narration in which our Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Inna sil'at Allahi ghaliya. Inna sil'at Allahi al-jannah. Or as he said, he said that what Allah is offering you is expensive. What Allah is offering you is paradise. So don't be fooled by the bad behavior of some Muslims. Don't discount Islam because of it. And don't refrain from accepting Islam because you're worried about facing some difficulties or some problems. If you see anything that claims to represent Islam, bring it back to the Quran, what the Prophet said, did and approved of, peace be upon him, and the way that his companions behaved. And you'll soon see whether it truly is a part of Islam or not. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. Allah knows best. We ask Allah to exalt the mention of grant peace to our messenger Muhammad, to his family and his companions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khair for watching this video. If you've benefited from Ustad Muhammad Tim Humble's videos here, we'd like you to head over to academy.islamicic.com. This is a complete new Muslim program that will take you from the start to finish of everything that you need to know as a new Muslim. Even if you're a born Muslim, you can still benefit from these videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share with others so we can spread the benefit and spread the reward. From the One True Message Foundation Dawah team, Jazakumullahu Khair, Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.